Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to create 3D text and place it in perspective in an environment using Photoshop CS5's new 3D Reposé feature. The first thing we'll do is we'll type in our text. Aloha seems fitting and then we'll move it into position. We'll choose a thick typeface and make sure the font size is very large. We'll make sure the letter spacing or tracking is wide since we don't want the exclusions to overlap. We'll go to 3D, Reposé, and Text Layer. This window will pop up telling us that the type will be rasterized, so just click Yes. This will open up the Reposé dialog. In this dialog is where we'll create our exclusions. The Reposé shape presets are a group of pre-assigned settings of various shapes you can give to your object. The Extrude features extend the original 2D shape in 3D space. Depth, as you can see, controls the length of extrusion. Scale controls the width. You can also apply parameters and twist, but we're not going to apply that right now. Inflate expands or collapses the middle of the front or back. The Materials settings apply materials such as brick or cotton, either globally or to various sides of the object. In order to keep things simple, I'll choose All and then choose a color. In the Scene settings, you could choose a style of lights from the menu. As you can see, there are many presets to choose from. Mesh Quality offers you the choice of quality or speed. We'll click on the 3D Scene tool. You can also manipulate the object by using the 3D Access tool, which is always located in the upper left. As you can see, you can move each axis independently of each other. We'll go back to the 3D panel and go to the 3D Object Roll tool, and we can pivot the object on its axis. The 3D Object Pan tool allows us to slide the object on its X or Y axis. We'll go back to the 3D panel and click on Snap the Object to Ground Plane. This forces the type to set itself down directly onto the grid. We'll click on the 3D Rotate Camera tool. We need to establish the ground plane which sets the horizon line and grid perspective. This ensures that the object has the same perspective as its environment. Once we've established that, we can go into the 3D Object Rotate tool and angle the object itself. We'll click on the 3D Light Rotate tool and pull on the light source handle to an angle that simulates the position of the sun in the sky of this photo. Notice the long shadows cast by the umbrellas, furniture, and people. We'll go to the Ground Plane Shadow Catcher which essentially casts a shadow on the object. Quality has three rendering options. Interactive, or painting, renders with high quality results, but it lacks detailed reflections and shadows. Ray traced draft renders with medium quality. And ray traced final is best reserved for final output. This option fully renders reflections and shadows. We want to make sure that there's only one light source. We'll go to 3D Lights and click on Infinite Light 2 and click the trash can. This makes sure that only one light source, in this case it's simulating the sun, is going to light our object. Our Aloha seems to live in our environment now. There are natural looking shadows in the water and reflections on our letter forms and they're all based on the parameters we gave it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to Blue Lightning TV. There you'll find great tutorials, tips, and tests in Photoshop and After Effects.